Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to do a landscape in graphite pencil. I'm going to draw this slightly foggy scene on the river and I'm going to use Faber-Castell graphite pencils. The paper I'm going to use is the Fabriano sketching paper about 6 times 8 inches in size and like I said I'm going to use uh, Faber-Castell graphite pencils but I'm going to use two kinds of graphite pencils. I'm going to use the uh, matte graphite pencils and the regular 9000 series. So I start with the composition and I'm drawing a simple sketch um, to decide where the line of the water will be and where some of these groups of trees will be. After that I'll start shading the sky. I'm just going to use a little bit of graphite powder. I'm going to put it down here in the top part of the paper and I'm going to spread it around gently with a brush. I'm not going to try to blend with a brush just yet. I'm not going to try to push it in. I'm just trying to distribute it more or less evenly and after that I'll do some blending with a piece of paper towel and that will blend very evenly and it will create an area of lighter value because I just want the sky to be a little bit mm, darker, not too dark, just a little bit foggy. And the paper towel or a tissue is a great blending tool with graphite if you want to blend larger areas of lighter value. Uh, after that I'm going to move on with the trees and everything. So this is uh, where the first group of the trees will be to the right but then in the middle I'm going to have another row of trees or another group of trees. These are going to be a little bit further away so they're going to need to be lighter. So in order to imitate that foggy effect I will simply use different amounts of value and different grades of pencils. So the further away something is, the lighter it will be and also it will be less uh, detailed in terms of the amount of textures and contrast and things like that. And I'm blending that with a brush. Now to the right of that I'm going to have a group of trees and bushes that are a little bit closer and therefore they're going to be uh, a bit darker and a bit more defined with, uh, with a few more details. So you can see that I'm trying to break these canopies into smaller parts, smaller segments and you can even see uh, maybe some suggestions of branches and some clusters of uh, leaves. I'm drawing some of these branches and uh, some parts of the tree trunk which are visible through the canopy. And here I'm using the Tombo Mono Zero eraser to draw some holes in that canopy so that it could look like uh, the light is coming through the canopy. After that I'm going to draw the reflection here And uh, the reflection doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to match the image above the water more or less in terms of the amount of value and in terms of the position. So if I can get that right, it will look realistic enough to the viewer, I think. So I'm blending that with a brush because I want the reflection to look smooth. I don't want that texture that we can see above the water where we have... That, that fine texture creates that uh, illusion like there are um, groups of lighter and dar darker shapes, lots of lighter and darker shapes, which is the sort of stuff that you see when you look at uh, canopies of trees at the distance. Anyway, I'm doing a bit of softening and blending with a paper towel and then pulling some lighter details with a Tombow Mono Zero eraser to define that line of the water. 
this distant group of trees in the back which is barely visible which is done with very light value that's also going to have a reflection of its own but it's going to be a lot lighter than the one that is closer to our viewpoint closer to the foreground so I'm going to do that with a harder pencil um, I am switching between a couple of different pencils so I have the regular Fabix Stell 9000 series graphite pencils which are very good graphite pencils and I also have these matte graphite pencils the pit graphite matte uh, pencils and uh, these are a little bit darker and they're less reflective and the reason why I chose to use both was because I thought that it would be easier for me to establish that contrast between the darker elements which are closer to us and those distant objects which are further away and partly mm, covered in fog which is why they're going to appear lighter and less detailed so basically I used two types of graphite pencils to try to enhance that effect to enhance that contrast even though it's not really necessary I mean you can do it without it but for the background uh, for those lighter details I used an HP and then uh, for that group of trees to the right which are a little bit darker I used uh, like a 3B or a 4B I'm not really sure and then uh, for these ones which are a little bit closer to the foreground I switched to I switched to um, Faber-Castell matte graphite pencils and I used a couple of grades of those like an 8B and, um, and even a 12B for some of the darker elements in the foreground but that I, I'll use those later now what you can see here is that as I'm drawing this gr group of trees in the center and to the left there's going to be some trees and bushes here and you can see that I already am trying to um, create some suggestions of clusters of leaves and trying to div divide that larger shapes, uh, shape into, into smaller shapes and to show some branches showing through the canopy uh, so I don't want to cover everything with uh, foliage and the way that I draw foliage is I, I just drag uh, the pencil create, using circular or back and forth motions, uh, very short marks and then um, if I don't want them to have too much texture I can just blend them like I'm doing here with a tutelian. A tutelian blends pretty thoroughly and you can always use it to kill the texture, to soften the texture especially on those objects which are further away and uh, where you don't want the texture to be too distracting but there's always going to be a little bit of texture but like I said you can control the, uh, the amount of it and here in front of those trees I'm going to have some bushes and maybe some of those bushes will be a, a little bit lighter color or lighter value so I'm going to shade the trees behind them a little bit more and I'm also going to go in here and there and add some suggestions of some darker shapes, darker spaces in those canopies just so that they would appear a little more interesting and a bit more three-dimensional like maybe um, there are some shadow areas in between in between those uh, groups of leaves or clusters of leaves and um, when I draw these darker shadow areas that allows the lighter areas to pop out and that makes uh, the canopy appear a bit more three-dimensional three like I said so I'm going to shade the rest of this uh, large group of trees to the right in a similar manner just uh, dragging my pencil and making short marks usually going back and forth or in circles and I like to uh, vary the stroke and the direction of the strokes just a little bit so that those marks which are supposed to represent the foliage look as random as possible because you, you don't want to make them look too uniform for example if you shade all in one direction holding the pencil in the same angle that's going to look a little bit too uniform and I don't really want that 
I'm lifting up a little bit of graphite here using the kneaded eraser and uh, making some parts of those bushes in the in front a little bit lighter. That's going to make it look like they're in front of the trees in the center. And the good thing about a kneaded eraser when it comes to erasing or lifting up graphite or removing graphite or reducing the amount of value is that it allows you to preserve that texture you've laid down because if I use a regular eraser it would just rub against the surface and um, it would create a bit of a mess but here I uh, laid down that fine texture and uh, when I just dab on it a little bit it just becomes a little bit lighter and that's exactly what I want. I don't want to ruin the tiny detail that I took the time to create. So I'm finishing the rest of those canopies to the right in a similar manner and like I said making sure that <clears throat> some of those um, some of those bushes in front of them are a little bit lighter. And in order to make them lighter and in order to make them pop out, I have to add a bit more, a bit more. I have to take away a bit more value using erasers. Now I can use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser here and there for some of the smaller details, but like I said, um, in this particular case, I prefer to use the uh, kneaded eraser. And another case where I prefer to use the kneaded eraser is to just uh, poke some of these smaller holes in the canopies of the trees just to make those parts of the canopy look a bit lighter and uh, to make them look less dense so that it looks like light is breaking through them. And that makes the trees look more realistic. Now here at the bottom I put down a little bit more uh, graphite powder by the way, I created this graphite powder simply by sharpening one of my woodless graphite pencils. And I'm just going to uh, pull or push this uh, graphite powder around and this time I'm going to try to push it in a little bit harder. I'm going to use a bit more pressure on the brush because uh, I want to use a brush as a sort of a painting tool where I can pull some of those strokes and uh, create maybe some suggestions of uh, waves or ripples in the water. And where I want it to be a little bit softer I can use a larger brush and maybe pull downwards to, smear, to make the reflection look more smeared. Uh, sometimes if you want to remove a little bit of value you can use a clean brush and it, it will lift up a little bit of that graphite powder. But if you want really clean marks you can use something like an eraser and here I'm going to use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser because it allows me to make these tiny marks like a line that defines the, um, the line of the water and also I can make these small sparkly effects on the water to suggest uh, gentle movement of the water and the ripples in the water. Another thing that I want to do is I want to make some parts of that reflection a little bit lighter because I want the the amount of value in the reflection to match the the image above the water and uh, like I said when drawing when drawing reflections in the water uh, you don't really have to worry about every single detail the you have to try to capture the general shapes the general amount of value because I think that the positioning and the amount of value is more important than then you know capturing the, every single exact shape and detail you don't really need to worry about things like that anyway um, here in the foreground I'm gonna draw some tall grass growing next to the water and for this I'm using a darker 12b 
matte graphite pencil. This is going to make uh, for a lot of contrast or tension between uh, these uh, objects in the foreground and those uh, objects in the background. And that's going to hopefully add to that foggy effect of those distant trees in the back. Here I'm just adjusting some of the smaller shapes in the reflection. And I'm going to draw more of this grass here to finish this uh, bottom portion of the foreground area. I'm also going to add a little bit of a value using a brush and, a and a graphite powder to make things a bit quicker and to make this look a bit fuller and uh, I'm going to soften the appearance of those blades of grass with brushes and other blending tools in order, in, in order to make them look more dense and I'm also drawing some smaller reflections here but here I have to be a little bit more careful about the exact shape and angle of those uh, blades of grass because I want to make them look as much as possible as the image above the water or as the object above the water. And uh, I can also pull some lighter blades of grass uh, with a Tomba Mono Zero eraser. Now here on the right side to complete the scene I'm going to draw some tree roots like uh, there is maybe a tree here on this side and it's um, and the lower part of the tree is exposed because it's uh, because it's uh, so close to the river and we can see a lot of these roots because it's growing on the river bank so I want to draw some twisted roots I'm just uh, drawing them by drawing those darker shadow areas in between the roots and then around them I'm going to add some foliage and some more grass. Maybe a few more leaves or bushes here. And uh, a little bit more value to the tree trunk and a bit more texture there as well. So I want to complete that foreground area and make it darker to create tension between the foreground and the background to enhance that contrast and capture the attention of the viewer but also to suggest uh, depth and dimension to the viewer to, to add uh, dimension to my drawing. Um, I'm adding some branches here maybe to the side just adding a little bit of foliage there just to make that part of the scene a bit more interesting adding a few more details on the tree trunk making making some parts of the tree trunk a little bit lighter making some of those roots a little bit um, you know making making them stand out a little bit more and here at the top i may also add a few more branches and a little bit more foliage why not so that i can push back those trees behind them to make them to to make it look like they're a little bit further away because whenever you stack an element in the foreground in front of the other elements that adds to the illusion of depth I think so there's that and I'm just uh, softening that with a brush a little bit just doing a little bit of refining on some of these tree roots and I'm pulling some of these lighter details with an eraser some of these lighter ripples in the water just to enhance the appearance of the water a little bit more make it look like an actual surface of the water I don't really need to do too much, just a few of those lighter details here and there. And now as you can see the scene is almost done. I'm going to put a tiny signature here in the lower left corner. So there it is. I hope you enjoy the drawing process. As usual, give me a like and comment, let me know what you think. For longer videos and more content, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video.
Bye for now.